may or may not remember, but I did make all these videos about like stars for 2018. So I basically tried to predict who I thought would have a good year or just a lot better year, maybe a breakthrough scene. So I put Jakub Mareczko, um, I'll, I'll try and leave a playlist for the, these videos. They're like pretty low quality, first couple of videos on YouTube, so they weren't ideal. Uh, Mahawi Kudas, this did quite well as well. He is, um, you know, good lad. Uh, Jack Haig, again, I thought he'd do well. Dylan Van Bala and Brian Mullen. So we'll go through each of the riders, basically their stats for the year. Um, and for Jakub Mareczko, I said the main thing was like he had to start winning in Europe, and he didn't. He just won 2.1s. 2.2s, uh, like so that basically you start ranking, so like uh, these are the biggest ones, 1.UW2 and then 2.2s, they're like decent, they're pro races, but they're not, you know, really. Um, Terreno Adriatico, he got, got sick, I mean, he won some stages in some irrelevant places. Uh, Tour of Morocco, he absolutely dominated, won a lot of races. Uh, Britain, Tour, Le Tour de Breton, he came third. Giro, this is why I really wanted him just to win. I thought he would if he really wanted to try and like step up to World Tour, which he actually did. He's now signed for CCC, BMC, CCC, CCC, uh, the merger team between CC, Spandy, Pogovica and BMC. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so he finished second in the Giro d'Italia, which I guess is decent on one stage, but and then fourth and then sixth, and then he pulled out. So I thought that was a bit disappointing. Korea, a bit disappointing. Uh, China, Tour China won. He got a couple second places and then won again in China. So for me, I guess he's got what he... He wanted, he's moved to the World Tour, but for me, I'd say he's a bit of a flop, to be honest. Like, he didn't, I thought he was really going to win um, a lot more. But anyway, he's got 35 pro wins. Um, so, yeah, can't really, 36, sorry, and you can't say no to that. All right, next is Mahawi Kudus. Um, so, he did finish second in the World Tour stage, so I really thought he might have a good Grand Tour this year. Uh, so, we start off with Velta La Comunitat Valenciana. Came third, sixth in that. I guess he probably lost time in the, uh, in the team time trial. I mean, third in the youth classification, can't complain. Oman, again, third in the youth classification, got some decent uh, stage finishes. Um, up the Green Mountain, finished 12th. That's, you know, that's respectable. Um, Catalonia, didn't do well, uh, didn't finish. Tour of the Alps, again, just a bit mad, didn't really happen. I guess he came 23rd in an HC um, race. I mean, it's like, this is the thing. I mean, it's still impressive, but it's not like the top, top. Uh, Romandy, again, he came 26th, general classification, 4th youth. So you can see he's like, consistent i feel like obviously his tting is not great um but he can climb pretty well um obviously tour of norway didn't really suit him didn't do anything tour of fjords again uh tour of swiss he started to do sixth in the youth classification i mean swiss is the world tour top 30 gc i mean it's it's decent he won the eritrea road race pretty standard fourth in the tt burgos this he's, he picked up here got a fourth place in the burgos which is sort of the warm-up for the welter uh and then in the welter itself he got he was in the break a lot. Um, you can see he got a, a top 10 here. Um, he got a sixth place as well. And I think he picked up one more, oh yeah, uh, a 12th as well from the break. So again, decent 31st overall in the GC. It's pretty solid, um, but I'd, I'd say it's a bit of a flop. Like I really thought he'd have a good chance of winning just more stages or something. I mean, he's been consistent this year, but I feel like he's top 20, top 30 GC in those like, one week stage races, but I feel like he should he should be better, like, considering how well he did last year in the Welter, I really thought this year he'd win a Grand Tour stage, or or at least really compete for one again, uh, and maybe I thought he'd win a couple, like, week-long stage races, um, like, just a stage in in those those stage races, but alas, he did not. For me, he's a flop again. Uh, it's tough on this one. I think Jakim Retsko, for sure, because he didn't win the Giro stage, but then he signed World Tour, so again, it's it's tough on both of these. They're sort of almost flops, almost almost successes, uh, but yeah, um, I think Mahari Kudus is signed for next year uh, with Dimension Data, oh no he's not, oh god, might not have a team next year, I'm not sure of that, um, right next we have Jack Haig, so Jack Haig uh, won Tour of Poland stage, pretty pretty solid to be fair, this year he didn't really get many good results, he got second youth classification in um, Tour of Basque Country, which is solid, uh, he did, he got 14th age, best long age, but I think he stepped up in terms of his domestique work. He was very solid in the Giro, helped Simon Yates a lot. So unfortunately, he lost, and then he went back to the Welter and was very solid there. So it's a success for him. He's really moved up, and um, and he got third in the Larry H. Miller Tour of Utah. So getting a third in an HC race is pretty solid. Um, so yeah, for sure, I think he's been a success. Uh, and you can just see he's a good, he's a good all-rounder. I think he's going to be one of those guys who's maybe not winning Grand Tours, but he'll, he'll win week-long stage races for sure because he's... He's very, very good on the time trial and very, very good on climbing. A real solid climber. So anyway, next we have Dylan Van Baal. Again, I thought he was going to do very well this year. Bit disappointed. 
I mean, he had a little bit of bad luck here or there, uh, and he was close. So anyway, start off the season pretty anonymously. Vuelta at Andalusia got seventh in the team time trial, but that's because he rides for Sky, uh, and they take that relatively seriously. Again, t- individual time trial, not great, but he seemed to have stepped up his time trial a lot. Uh, Flanders, he was in a good move. He was winning with Tom Van Aersbroek, uh Casper Pedersen, and himself and then when Terpstra bridged across Terpstra went on the front on the Quermont and just absolutely drilled it and that's when Van Barley then got dropped and then just couldn't really recover but it's decent like I mean I feel like he'll get he'll be getting top fives in Flanders in a couple of years for sure he's at that level maybe just a couple percent off but very close Parry Bay again top 20 solid um Tour of Yorkshire 13th GC that's decent in 2.1 race um he won the team time trial uh, in the Dauphiné, won the individual time trial uh, for the Na- Dutch National Championships. Bink Bank Tour, again, 5th GC, very solid result. Bink Bank Tour is, you know, it's one of those races that is uh, for the guys who do the Spring Classics, uh, like Paris Roubaix uh, and Tour of Flanders. If you're doing well in Bink Bank Tour, then you need a solid rider. And then the Welter, I think he had a good Welter. He got in a lot of um, good breakaways. He, I think he should have won the stage. Really, he came second, and then he got, cr- uh, he got wiped out by that stupid, but um, stupid. What's his face? Um, stupid person like who was spectator or official who was after the race. Anyway, that was very bad for me. I think he's had a successful year. Um, obviously, maybe technically he didn't get as good results as he did last time. Like last year, he got fourth in Flanders, but I think across the board his TT is getting better, and I think he's um. Yeah, he's definitely improving. All right, next, last last but not least, we have my old mate Ryan Mullen. Uh, he started off very well, for, won his individual time trial in the uh, San Juan. He said that moving from Cannondale to Trek, uh, it was going to help him a lot because they did a lot more wind tunnel testing, a lot more. Their equipment for the TT was a lot better. Uh, for Vuelta well, Argo Gav, the individual time trial, I don't think it suited him that well. Didn't do well in that. Uh, Tirreno Adriatico, top 10, again, solid time. Uh, oh, no, sorry, team time trial, so, you know, that's... Uh, that's pretty good. An individual, he came 19th. Um, so it's not ideal, but I think that might have been a, a slightly hilly time trial. I can't remember exactly. Um, again, the prologue doesn't really suit him. Hilly, technical, not really his uh, forte, one could say. I mean, still good, 60 seconds. I mean, second, 60 seconds isn't great, but like Simon Yates was almost top 10 on this. So, I mean, it did suit more of a punchy rider. Uh, anyway, individual time trial in the jury, he came 13th, which is, you know, pretty solid and definitely an improvement from where he's been. Uh, he won the ni- national championships in Ireland. Obviously, um, there's not too much competition for that um, for him. Twelfth in the Bink Bank Tour uh, time trial, seventh in the TT for the Worlds, um, the TTT. But we will see how he will do in the World Championships. But for me, so far, I'd say it's been a successful season. Like he's he's done well. Um, maybe he hasn't got everything he wanted um, in terms of like a top ten in a time trial in a, a Grand Tour. But for me, he's had a successful season. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. What are your thoughts with these riders? And um, should I do stars for 2019? I've got a couple that I'm thinking of, you know, who might I might know who are going to be doing well. Uh, but anyway, it will be interesting to see uh, how these guys do just for the rest of the season. There's not too much racing going on. Um, and yeah, I will do another episode, well, another series of 2019 stars. So cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. His message, your boy sounds rushed.